According to the Code of Jewish Law, 30 days before a holiday, especially before Passover, you're supposed to study the laws of Pesach. Because it's a complicated holiday and it's intricate. There's two seders. There's one seder in Israel, two seders outside the land of Israel. There's the gefilte fish and the kreplach and the matzibos. And there's so much going on. So 30 days before you have to, believe it or not, Passover is less than a month away. So tonight we got to do something about Passover. The book we use on the first two nights of the Seder is called the... Thank you. This table right here is a good table. They're right here. Haggadah. Now, this Haggadah has the... It's, you read the whole book, two nights of the year in the diaspora. And the, this Haggadah talks about the four sons. Right away it's a good thing. Jewish people and Jewish religion is not monolithic. There's room for different personalities. You don't have to be like so many drops of water. If you're born of a Jewish mother, that means you belong to the club, you should follow the rules. No beer on Passover. No luncheon, no pasta even. There's chumetz. Chumetz is a no-no. So there's all kinds of rules and regs. But the Torah teaches us it's not all the same. People are different. Jewish people have different characters. There's the wise and the wicked and the simple, the one who can't even ask a question. Mostly the high center, our theme, is outreach to non-affiliates. That means we're really looking for the, not even the four sons, we're looking for the fifth son. Our inspiration and our mentor and great leader, the Lubavitcher Rebbe of late memory, who recently passed away in less than 20 years ago, he said there's a fifth son. Why isn't the fifth son mentioned in the Haggadah? There's only four sons in the Haggadah. The fifth son isn't mentioned in the Haggadah of the Passover Seder because he's not at the Seder. Is it the ball game? Is it the movies? He's clubbing. He's trying to go for holy hookups somewhere. He's trying to score. He's whatever. He's not, but he's not with the family. He's not doing the Seder. So that's problematic. So what the High Center really wants from you, our friends, our investors, our supporters, what we want from you tonight is I feel confident when I say that everybody in this room knows someone, a distant relative, an acquaintance, casual acquaintance, a friend, a business connection. You know a Jew who's not gonna go this year. You know someone who's not gonna be at a Seder. We want them. Those are the Jews that we want. 90% of 5.2 million American Jews have never been to Israel. We're not looking for the 10% that have been. We're looking for people who, they don't, they'd like to go to the Greek islands with a couple extra dollars, they'd like to go to Maui, they'd like to go different places, but they've never been to Israel. Oh, they're shooting there, I don't wanna go, I'm afraid. That's fine, we're looking for those people. Those are our Jews. We want, they used to have a chicken dinner, but then Zadie and Bubby died, and we, I came here from Detroit, Chicago, Miami, and other suburbs of Brooklyn, and here we are in Los Angeles, and we, I don't know where to go, I'm not sure, I don't. And I'm reminded of the story that my father, Mendel's grandfather, told me my father said, I'm born and raised in Atlantic City, New Jersey. My father told me that the chief rabbi of Atlantic City lived on a street. And he had a long black coat and a little, a little beard and a big hat with the brim up and everything. He looked like a real, a real rabbi. And uh, he didn't wear a high baseball cap, which I enjoy wearing. But uh, he had a fellow that was a neighbor, a Jewish neighbor, 
And every Saturday when he would finish being in the synagogue, the rabbi would come home and pass his neighbor, and the neighbor would be mowing the lawn Saturday afternoon. And the rabbi was hoping maybe he didn't know it was Shabbos. Maybe he didn't know you're not allowed to cut the lawn. He tried to make it, jumping in contortions, trying to, and as soon as he'd say, hello, good afternoon, the neighbor in the middle of mowing the lawn would say, Rabbi, Shabbat Shalom. As often away, what am I going to do now? But meanwhile, it's, uh, so he's, he thought to himself, he wants to invite him to the Seder. He's sure he doesn't have a Seder. He wants to invite this neighbor to the Seder, but he feels maybe it's pushy. Maybe he's being too pushy. So he, does, he did, doesn't, a year after year goes by, finally the neighbor approaches the rabbi and says, Rabbi, you know, I'm not a good Jew, but I'd give anything to be at your Seder. And he says, you know, it's funny, for years I was thinking, should I, shouldn't I, I'm ambivalent, and so it all worked out. So those are the kind of people we're really looking for. Also, there's two couples that I see every year at our Passover, our, our public Passover Seder. And uh, the reason they come is because they always celebrate the first time that they met was at a public Passover Seder. It was about 10 years ago. They got married. I actually didn't officiate. They thought I would do a two-hour Latin mass because I'm so orthodox or something or Hebrew or whatever. Anyway, so they got some other rent a rabbi from the online server, whatever it was. And they, it's fine. And uh, meanwhile, they come every Passover Seder to, this, to celebrate the anniversary of the first time they met. But I say to all of you, the Talmudic expression, whoever sustains a life, whoever gives money to a, a hospital in Israel, as we know our honoree has done, and many of you do it for so many great causes, like bringing Jews back to Judaism. This is our middle name. Thank you for being a partner in that. God bless you all. Happy Passover.